On today's Bengals breakdown, we're to look at some surprise cut candidates for the Bengals. Not the big names or the obvious names. Nick Scott not going to be on this list. It'll be different than the last cut candidates video we did as a result. I would even argue Joe Mixon, despite his own social media comments, wouldn't exactly be a huge surprise either. Now, we have gained 255 subs so far this month. Can we get to 400 by the end of the month? It's rapidly winding down. Help us get there. Hit that sub button right now for more free Bengals YouTube videos. All right, first up on the surprise, or at least somewhat surprising cut candidates list, it's B.J. Hill, the defensive tackle. The reason why he'd be a surprise to me is, although there is sizable monetary savings, $7.5 million of his uh, $10.83 million cap hit, you would save with a release. It would be surprising to me because he's your best defensive lineman under contract, I would argue, by a massive margin. You already have to get more defensive tackle help this offseason. Cutting your best one, although it frees up money, is kind of concerning to me. At the same time, his numbers have dipped. Uh, he was really good in 2021. Has it been quite the same splash player? The sacks went up. TFLs didn't. I think B.J. Hill was a quality football player. But in the last year of his deal, you typically want to make a decision. Extend or not extend. If you don't want to extend, consider cutting. Maybe what you do is you explore the free agent defensive tackle market. If you get a bigger name guy, Wilkins, Jones, Medebike, whatever, then maybe it makes more sense to release B.J. Hill. But I also don't want to enter the beginning of the free agency period in March with Zachary Carter and Jay Tufele as my starting defensive tackles. That is such a massive need. I, I just I don't want to go down that path. So that's why it'd be a surprise, right? Next up is linebacker Jermaine Pratt, who had just gotten paid by the Cincinnati Bengals and wasn't as good this past year. $7.13 million cap hit, not that bad. You'd only save $2.47 million if you cut him before June 1st. Now, the asterisk here is you could designate him a post-June 1st cut. You would free up $4.8 million then, although you wouldn't be able to use that until after June 1st, and you'd be carrying that cap hit to the start of free agency. So does the 2.3-ish make a big difference? Maybe, maybe not. And I don't think he's that expensive. And yeah, Pratt, you know, the, the raw counting numbers look a little bit better, actually. Tackles, sacks, TFLs, forced fumbles. I also feel like the coverage wasn't as good. There were some more missed tackles as well. But there were games that Pratt played really well. And I am of this belief. I have paid my linebacking core. Logan Wilson, Jermaine Pratt. Two guys that maybe you weren't sure were going to be around long term. Well, they got deals done. I can't blow it up after just one year of those two being together and being paid. I need them to play better. And again, similar issues here. <clears throat> uh, your next top three guys are free agents. And I don't want to start, start Devin Hopper, Harper. You cut Pratt, you're creating a need. And you have to fill with a draft pick or with maybe even more money than you get by saving him. So the pin comment on today's video. What would you do with Jermaine Pratt? K for you want to keep him. C for you want to cut him. Alex Kappa is next up here. Again, this is a, a similar trend. He is the best player at his respective position group. That is guard. $9.25 million cap hit. Not too terrible. 4.75 to use now. $7 million if you did in the post-June 1st cut. Kappa's a solid football player. And I got my own issues with Cordell Volson. I wouldn't mind upgrading over him. I don't know if I want to get two new starting guards or make Volson your incumbent there. Again, some up and down play for this entire offensive line this year. Kind of shaky to start, got a little bit better, still not perfect, still want to get some more help here. I'd also be a bit hesitant to say, you know what? I am going to revamp my entire right side of the offensive line because I don't think Joe Williams is going to be back this year. And depth-wise, I'm not playing Trey Hill. I'm not going to re-sign and start Max Sharp and Cody Ford. I sure as hell ain't playing Jackson Carmen. He would not be a surprise cut, by the way, or a trade candidate or whatever. So I'm a little bit anxious to look to cut Kappa as well. So name your own surprise Bengals cut candidate. Again, we're trying to pick players that would be a little bit surprising and maybe you don't want to end up cutting. Sound off in the comment section right now.
Sam Hubbard is next up here on the list. That is the defensive end. Of the run-stopping options at defensive end, Hubbard is the best of the bunch, and he pairs nicely with Trey Hendrickson. The problem is this group is starting to get a little bit expensive. Hendrickson's making big money. Hubbard's cap hit's going up. You spent a first-round pick on Miles Murphy, and you'd save either 7.5 or 8.12 million bucks with a Hubbard release. It's a lot of money for a team that's going to lose a bunch of cap space if and when they officially tag T. Higgins. I think that'll end up being the case. Hubbard's been pretty steady. You know, he's going to get you 55 to 65 tackles, six, five, seven, seven and a half sacks, near double-digit TFL, somewhere in that range. And the room does get a little bit thin if you were to cut Hubbard, but you'd save money. Do you, the real question here is, do you trust Joseph Osai or Cam Sample to be your new defensive end three and make Miles Murphy a starter? You might be one year away from going that route or someone else in the place of Osai and or Sample. Today's show is made possible by prize picks. There's no more NFL games to do prize picks with, but MLB will be here before you know it. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You're picking two to six player stat projections, more than or less than on those stat projections. And I always advise the flex play. You, you got to get two out of three right, three out of four, four out of five, whatever. You don't have to hit all of them to come out on top with prize picks. No NFL, no college football, NBA is kind of on a break as well. But baseball is now available on prize picks. Some season-long picks I've got for my Reds. Ellie De, De, De La Cruz, I'm going more than stolen bases. 38.5, he almost got to last year. And home runs, this one is the aggressive one. More than 21 and a half. I think he can get there. I think, I think a, another season of development will be a good thing for him. And then Hunter Green, he's going to be a strikeout machine this year. More than 189.5. As long as they stay healthy... I think you'll be in pretty good shape there. So go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. Zachary Carter is next up here. And we'll eventually do some trade candidates, and that might be a decent one here. Simply put, I've been pretty disappointed by him. Uh, he has not lived up to his draft status when DJ Reader went down, he had a chance to make some bigger impacts there, and I, uh, it just never happened. Now, the issue is you're not saving much money, and for a $1.4 million cap hit, you're probably going to give him an offseason and preseason to try to show some more growth and be better, but I think this is a name we will revisit come training camp time, because through 33 games of his NFL career, where's the impact? You spent a third-round pick on this guy. You need him to be more than a half-sack and two-TFL player. These are the types of picks that as you shuffle out other players on your roster, as you have high-paid guys like eventually Jamar Chase and Hendrickson and, of course, the, the quarterback, those day-two picks, they, they're not all going to be starters, but they need to be at least rotation pieces. And so far, I don't trust that from Zachary Carter. So are you out on him? Y for yes, N for no, sound off in the comments section. Mike Hilton is next up here, the cornerback. I'm a big fan of Hilton's game. Uh, it's the type of nickel corner I like to have in the current meta of the NFL. He can cover, and he can help stop the run. Now, I would even be open to extending him, by the way. But there's another player that we might need to revisit his role for moving forward. $7.45 million cap hit for Mike Hilton. 6.45 of that could be saved. I've seen Bleacher Orange as a trade chip. We can revisit that again during our trade candidates video. But I don't want to get worse at corner. And I think dumping Hilton would make me worse. The number's really good. Not always perfect. And I think you saw some slight signs of decline, but not like off the cliff and still starting caliber. 84 tackles, 12 TFLs. He was one of your best run stoppers in TFLs. That nickel blitz still works so well with Mike Hilton. Eight PBUs, two INTs. Chidabe Awuzie, I assume, is going to be gone. I assume your starter is going to be Cam Taylor-Britt, DJ Turner, and Mike Hilton. Maybe a draft pick mixed in there as well. The one argument that I'm like, okay, I, I get where you're going for there is maybe you want to put Daxton Hill back at the nickel corner role. Maybe you want to invest some of those savings from Hilton into a more impact deep free safety 
and put Hill back at his Michigan spot of nickel corner. That I could have a conversation with. But I also still think if you're ranking your top corner or your top DBs in general, it's still Hill and Hilton in that group. Now we will have a bunch of off-season coverage for you guys right here on the show. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. YouTube.com slash Bengals TV. Not too many offensive players on this list. There's a lot of free agents and not that many big contracts that make sense. Ted Karras will be the final one here on that side of the ball. He's a solid but not elite center option. Similar is structure to uh, Mike Hilton, just a half or $0.05 million difference there. 7.4 and 6.4 potential savings. For me, again, this kind of falls into the Alex Kappa conversation of like, there is savings. That's worth having the conversation over. Also, are you getting a starting caliber center for $6.4 million? Probably not. You're probably going to pay more than that for a player of Karras' uh, ability, but he also wasn't as good this past year. And I think my preferred plan would be, let's keep Ted Karras on this roster. And depending on how the board falls in round one and round two, maybe in round three, maybe you consider a center. Maybe you fall in love with Jackson Powers Johnson. Maybe Zach Frazier falls to you on day two. You know? Maybe Cedric Van Pran makes sense in the third round. Those, those are options I'd be willing to explore. But I don't want to just cut him and be like, okay, i got to find a new center. And, oh, what do we have here? Trey Hill? We're going to re-sign Max Sharping? Karras is better than what you have. And unless you want to break the bank for a Tyler Biotish, an injured Connor Williams, I think relative to cost, Karras is your best, best bet at the time. 